Hey there, today we are going to talk about this amazing gaming beast which I've been able to build out of used parts for only around $450 or euros which right now is basically the same, it's like 101 and how you could build a similar PC with a little patience and some work. So let's go! Okay, so when I started this project, my goal was to build a sophisticated budget gaming PC that can run basically any game with high settings at full HD. Well, so I usually have some safe searches on our local regional eBay platform in Germany, which is kind of similar to stuff like Craigslist, Kijiji, Facebook Marketplace and such. And when it alerted me about this PC over here, I just had to get it. But back then, it wasn't the same PC as it is today. So I paid $185 including shipping for the initial PC which you can see right now and it contains this amazing Thermaltake Core V21 case which is a very flexible cubic micro ATX case. The guy I bought it from even installed an RGB strip with a remote control. Furthermore, it had an MSI A320M Pro V2 mainboard with a Ryzen 3 2200G an NVIDIA GT 1030 GPU, 16GB of DDR4 RAM unfortunately with only 2133 MHz, a basically brand new 1TB Team Group SATA SSD and a 1.5GB TB SATA HDD, as well as a 400W PSU bike silence. And that doesn't sound like a gaming PC right now, I know, but my plan was to sell some of the parts and upgrade them with stronger stuff. The initial PC was only able to score 3046 points on File Strike, 3394 points on PC Mark 10, a score of around 3450 on Cinebench R23, and it took 9 minutes and 5 seconds for the GPU to render the Blender Classroom demo file. So not exactly gaming material yet, um, as expected. So the first thing that I did was to look out for a stronger CPU. And initially I was aiming for a used Ryzen 5 3600, since this is supposed to be a strong yet budget gaming PC, but I soon noticed that a used Ryzen 7 3700X wasn't that much more expensive and it would surely make the PC more future-proof and even allow streaming or doing other stuff while gaming. And after some searching and bargaining, I was able to score a Ryzen 7 3700X for only $115, including shipping, which is admittedly pretty good, but doable with some time and patience. If your budget is super tight, you could also choose a Ryzen 3 3300X, which has a great single core performance despite only having 8 threads. So, since the old Ryzen 3 2200G only had a flat AMD Stealth stock cooler, I needed to get something more capable for cooling the new 8-core CPU and went for the AMD Prism RGB uh, cooler instead because it just looks good and it would come in handy in that neat case because it has a window and the fact that it was able to get one for $20, including shipping. I didn't need the Ryzen 3 anymore after updating the BIOS to allow the 3700X to work, so I was able to sell it for $50 and the old CPU fan for another $5. The next thing that I had to upgrade in order to get the party started was of course the GPU. So first I planned to use a Asus Dual GTX 1070 for $150, but later decided to aim for a GTX 1080 instead. I was able to score an Asus Strix GTX 1080 for $210, including shipping, which happens to be one of the better custom models out there. Since now I no longer needed the GT 1030, I sold it for $40. Bucks. And because the 400 watt PCU didn't have enough PCI Express connectors and I wouldn't use adapters for such a powerful GPU, I actually upgraded the PSU as well. I was able to pick up a modern 700W Xilence PSU for only $20 right around the corner and sold the existing 400W PSU for $15. P.S. If you think that Xilence is cheap China trash, let me tell you that the company has been bought by the owner of The Quiet a while ago and they actually make pretty decent PSUs now. 
And last but not least, I swapped out the slow 2133 MHz RAM, which was kind of tricky since the motherboard was really picky about the compatibility. And I actually had to try three different RAM kits until one of them would actually boot with anything other than, than the stock speed of 2133 MHz. So I went for a 3200 MHz Team Group kit for 45 bucks, including shipping, which unfortunately has relatively low timings. Still, it was a bit better than the old Crucial kit the PC came with, but this was probably something that I didn't really need to do as the gaming results were only affected marginally, to be honest, like one or two FPS difference at best, while I was actually expecting more. But that is probably due to the very high timings that the faster RAM came with. However, after selling the old kit for 35 bucks and calculating all my transactions, two hours later, I've spent a total of $455 for the whole system. So after upgrading all the parts, the benchmark results of course went through the roof, so to speak. In Firestrike I now saw a total score of 20,129, a PC Mark 10 score of 6,452, which is pretty neat, and a score of 12,171 in Cinebench R23. And the classroom test now only took 1 minute and 42 seconds using the GTX 1080 as render unit. But how did it actually perform in gaming, you wonder? So now let's find that out right now after the message of today's sponsor. Yeah, I'm kidding. There is no sponsor. So let's game. But before we begin, I recorded the gameplay on an external PC with a capture card. So what you see is the actual FPS you could expect. There was some stuttering caused by the recording software though. So even with high FPS, it sometimes seems a bit laggy. I'm sorry for that. But it wasn't like that for me while playing the games and it was, trust me, it was perfectly buttery smooth all the time. Okay, so all the games I've tested today were running at 1080p and high settings, as that was the goal I've set myself. In Call of Duty Warzone, I saw an average of 108 FPS and a 1% low of 64 FPS. The game is perfectly playable and the frame times were smooth as well. Keep in mind that you are seeing high settings here, so lowering the settings would easily allow you to run at 144 FPS to make better use of a faster 144Hz monitor. In Elden Ring I saw a stable 60FPS in 99% of the times with a 1% low of 46FPS. I even think one could further raise the settings here for an even better visual experience. However, no problemo for the GTX 1080 and the Ryzen 7 3700X. Smooth gameplay, smooth optics. Let's have a look at the next game then, shall we? Forza Horizon 5 isn't that demanding and on the high preset I actually saw an average of 134 FPS and a very high 1% low of 94 FPS. So you could easily choose ultra or even the extreme settings here and still get away above 60 FPS for sure. This would even allow you to run the game at 4K with an average of around 70 FPS. I was testing a deathmatch for Overwatch 2 and saw an average of 309 FPS on high settings with a grade 1% low of 229 FPS. Well, I've got nothing to add here I guess, perfectly playable and you could surely furtherize the settings if you wanted to. The brand new Aplex Tail Requiem isn't optimized very well and super demanding on your gaming gear. I saw an average of around only 47 FPS with a 1% low of 34 FPS. The game looks fantastic though and me personally would consider this playable. But for 60 FPS you would have to lower the settings and maybe overclock the GPU. In Red Dead Redemption 2 I was getting around 62 FPS on average with a 1% low of 48, except for Saint Denis at night which was a bit more demanding. Still. It's perfectly playable and pretty to look at. Gamer material if you ask me. So next. I was actually using the very high preset for Assassin's Creed Valhalla and still saw an average of 72 FPS and a 1% low of 42 FPS. Perfectly playable. 
You could even save some energy and noise if you'd cap the FPS to 60 here. Just like Plague's Tale, Cyberpunk 2077 is super demanding and not very well optimized and therefore I wasn't able to achieve the 60fps goal on high settings without using any FSR at least. I saw an average of 48fps with a 1% low of 32 instead. So one might consider using FSR or lower the settings to medium here in order to get the 60fps. You could of course consider to use FSR if you are okay with the visual consequences, that is. Playing games at WQHD or even 4K is possible if you play some older games and or lower the graphics one or two steps depending on the game. For example, The Witcher 3 on high settings and 4K was running with around 52 FPS. Shadow of the Tomb Raider on low settings and 4K, which still looks okay, was running with around 58 FPS, for example. By the way, the total power usage, aka the wattage of the PC while gaming, was between 280 and 310 watt, depending on the title. While idling, it was only using around 55 to 60 watt, which is pretty decent considering the total performance it has. Undervolting the GPU was shaping off around 40 watt without a noticeable performance loss when gaming. The benchmarks have been recorded at stock settings though. If you want to know how to undervolt a Nvidia card, then please check out my detailed beginner review on how to do that over here after the video. I will also post the link in the description. The noise level of the system was okay as well, considering I was only using the stock AMD cooler for the CPU. Especially when idling, it was almost silent. Okay, so if you want to build a PC similar to this, okay, so if you want to build a PC similar to this one, my personal recommendation would be to invest some time scouting your local used hardware platform or eBay for a pre-built PC with a good price to performance ratio. Even if, if it won't be the final PC, since you can usually sell the parts separately for more than the whole PC it costs you. Because most people are a bit lazy and will give you a discount when you buy more stuff at once. The benefit of looking for an AMD system is that you can upgrade to a third generation Ryzen basically guaranteed, which will still be enough for a few years to come. Some of them even allow you to upgrade to a 5000 series CPU. After you updated the BIOS, that is. So if you then swap out the CPU and the GPU, you and get a good replacement for both of them, you can finally build a pretty decent budget gaming PC thanks to the dropping GPU prices these days, finally. Uh, it doesn't have to be a Nvidia card, by the way. You could also opt for a RX 5700 or RX 5600 XT, which will give you very similar results. And the 5600 XT might even be a better alternative to the GTX 1070. Of course, there's always some risk in buying used parts, but with a few years of experience, I can tell you that really 99% of the stuff that I bought over the years was working perfectly fine. If you manage to buy the stuff via eBay or PayPal, you even get some kind of buyer's insurance that might help you if something is really broken on arrival. If I had chosen the GTX 1070 or an RX 5600 XT, and a Ryzen 5 with a cheaper cooler instead, I would have probably saved around $90 to $100, by the way, and still get a decent performance, even though a bit slower, of course. Now, let me know what you think of this gaming machine. Is it a good deal? Would you get one for yourself for $450 if you could? Let me know in the comments. I'm eager to hear your thoughts about this. And if you've got any questions on building a system like that, feel free to ask them in the comments. So that's all for today. If you liked the video, please consider liking or even subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.